toy. I, it just because I always feel a little bad, you know, somewhere at the beginning of all this, I talk about trans first waves, I talk about longitudinal waves. Uh, I used to have a slinky that I used to demonstrate those. Uh, but then word got out that I usually stretch it and let go, so nobody ever wanted to be on the other end. Um, this is a safer demo. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to generate the transverse pulse first. The motion of the medium is up and down. The disturbance itself moves back and forth. Ooh. What they really need is like glowing lights on the end. <laughs> and you're recording this, so I'm going to stop there. I was going to add the pharmaceutical enhancements. <laughs> but you can see transverse displacements of the wave, of the medium, as the disturbance itself propagates back and forth. Okay? Notice that the pulse is coming out upright. Okay? It has a lot to do with the fact that the medium is free to move on the side. I don't know if for sure that it'll happen. What, what if I fix this? According to what we were talking about the other day, the pulse ought to come back inverted. But I've never really played with it on this. I don't know. Ooh, Ooh. it does. What do you know? Physics works. <laughs> <laughs> and they don't pay me to be confident. They just pay me to pretend to. Anyway. <laughs> Uh, I could probably, I don't know, maybe I could do something like a longitudinal wave to some degree. Set the uh, ripples back and forth in the medium like that. Kind of works. Yeah, you can see it kind of passing back and forth and you really look. Maybe not so much from that. I can see it. You can probably see it. Uh, the other thing I wanted to do, uh, you notice that when I shake the medium, uh, I get a reflection back from the other side. That reflection should be essentially identical, give or take damping, uh, to the incident wave. That is, the incident reflected wave should be essentially identical. So I should be able to create standing waves in the medium. Now, it's funny because if I drive it in an arbitrary way, they won't necessarily resonate. Who knows what really happens? But it's sort of like, you know, how, no matter how I drive the system, after a while, you want to sort of see it, damp, or sort of, there we go, let me step back with this up. You want to see it sort of uh, stabilize out into something that looks like a standing wave pattern. Okay? Let me try talking without doing this convertible. <laughs> okay? I'm going to drive the system in a completely arbitrary manner. I'm going to try to make it sinusoidal because we know the math for sinusoidal waves pretty well. I'm going to drive it in an entirely arbitrary manner. My waves are going to hit the boundary here and reflect back so I've got identical waves traveling in the opposite directions. I should be able to generate uh, standing waves. Now, in fact, there will be a transient part to this. When I first start rocking it, it's going to look really weird. But this is what I was trying to say, but I couldn't really think and, and uh, shake at the same time. Um, after the transient solution dies down, what should persist is a fairly steady state uh, standing wave. So I'll just drive it in a completely arbitrary manner. And what do you see? <laughs> a standing wave ends up developing in the medium. Okay? If we we're really uh, fanatical about it, we could probably calculate the number of intermediate nodes. We could figure out uh, which harmonic this is, all sorts of other things. But I, I can't watch it closely enough to do that. Uh, what if I do really slow? Ooh, that looks cool. In fact, I can tell you that looks like it has two intermediate nodes. Okay. And pretty close to resonance because I'm banging the sticks on the uh, table. What if I were able to hack it? Shooting here for trying to get uh, half the way from the top It's not quite as nice as I would like. All right. The last demo, I think that's just about everything. The last demo I've got here. Uh, oh, that goes with this. <laughs> oh, no, no, wow. Yes. <laughs> uh, uh, the, the tuning forks. Okay. 
Uh, the tuning forks are both nominally tuned to about the same frequency, uh, 256, which apparently makes that a C, and 256, which makes that a C as well. Okay, uh, but there's a difference. This one's a little shorter than this guy because they've made up for it by tacking mass here on the sides. The mass that they tack on the sides is actually movable, so I can change the inertia presented to the left tuning fork uh, relative to the inertia seen by the right tuning fork. In other words, I can tune the left tuning fork, uh, making it identical in frequency or making it different. Okay? What I'm going to do is I'm going to excite these guys. Uh, probably by telling bad jokes or something. Uh, and, well, we'll take a measure of how well tuned they are here in a moment. So let me uh, strike this guy first. <laughs> Notice, of course, the demo guy is long uh, They took off some gun. Out here because I think that's the other one just sounded way too raspy. I don't know if you can hear the rippling. Yeah, yeah you can hear bits of that. Not when I'm talking, but I'll strike one. capable of hearing beats up to about 7 hertz. If these are more than 7 hertz off, you're not going to hear beats, probably, unless you've got really good hearing. You know, I say, well, shoot, so if my instrument is really off tune, I have no way of tuning it. Yes, you do. If your instruments are more than 7 hertz apart, you're going to know that they're not in tune. <laughs> and you'll fix it, you know. Uh, you use your ears, you know, your measure of frequency to get it close. But, you know, individually, if I strike this, it doesn't sound so different from that. Other than that, one sounds louder. Okay, they're kind of roughly tuned into the right neighborhood. Uh, but are they dead on? Are they really right to know that for sure? You've got to listen for both and hear the beats. The fact that we're hearing rapid beats means they're fairly far apart. You know, I'm hearing you know a couple of seconds, so we yeah, two or three hertz off maybe. No idea whether I need to go up or down. So we'll fake it, right? <laughs> See, I don't have just this word. They got they gave me the wrong. Pretty close to the same amplitude too. 